And here we are at the Palais des Expositions in Versailles for the yearly meeting of historic car lovers. No, not the Retromobile Show, but the start of the Tour Auto. During a whole week, the most gorgeous automobiles will drive on the roads of France. Ça passe, ouais. Allez, on avance, on braque tout. À gauche, à gauche, à gauche, à gauche. After two difficult editions, the consequences of the pandemic, the Tour Auto can regain its traditional spot on the calendar in early spring. C'est tout bon, marche arrière et tu t'alignes. Je me mets derrière. C'est tout bon. On Monday, the 25th of April, almost 250 teams are ready for the administrative and technical scrutineering. Les bracelets pilotes qu'on va mettre tout de suite. Ça, c'est la fiche euh, contrôle technique à présenter au commissaire technique. Okay. Bon, il faudra un autographe chacun. 31 years ago, Patrick Peter revived the event, creating a historic version of the Tour Auto, and he still enjoys meeting the competitors and enthusiastically admires the cars they bring along. Ça va? Alors vous, vous êtes en compétition? Oui, on est les plus petits. Bah oui, mais c'est bien. Les poussés. Bah, je suis ravi de voir les trois, les trois points en points là. C'est bien d'être courageux, mais en tout cas, on est ravi de voir ces voitures. Not only the post-war cars are in the spotlight of the 31st edition of the Tour Auto, the same goes for the monsters of the 70s. Celle-ci, elle a gagné le Tour Auto à l'époque du Tour Auto. C'est-à-dire, c'est maintenant, c'est euh, on refait la course avec des voitures. La première fois. Ouais, exactement. Elle l'a gagné à l'époque, celle-là. Elle est jolie, hein Attends, il y en a d'autres derrière. There are already plenty of fans to admire the cars parked in front of the Porte de Versailles, but it's also a suitable time to do some shopping. Chers amis, bonjour à tous, merci d'être présents pour cette deuxième vacation officielle que nous faisons avec les Tour Auto au départ du Tour Auto. 120 000 c'est pris, 130 000. 130 000 ici, 150 000. 150 000. Adjugez pas les mille, bravo. But for most, this is an excellent opportunity to stroll through the corridors of motorsports history. Celles-ci, elles sont assez dingues quand même. Ouais, elles ont les couleurs, les couleurs mythiques, quoi. Ah ouais, Celle-ci, elle est remarquable. Les jantes sont dingues aussi, hein. On Monday evening, it's time for the official start of the Tour Auto 2022. Bonjour à tous, bienvenue. Bienvenue, donc c'est la 31e édition du Tour Auto. On a 232 voitures. On a un retour des étrangers, puisque les deux dernières années, il était quand même très difficile pour beaucoup d'entre eux de se déplacer. Donc on est très content de les retrouver. Et donc on va faire un tour qui va démarrer de Paris, comme d'habitude, et qui va arriver à Andorre. C'est une première. En dehors, en cinq étapes qui sont euh, La Baule, euh, Limoges, euh, Bordeaux et Pau. The Tour Auto Paris Andorra has now officially started and it's time to celebrate. But not too long, because on Tuesday the competitors have an important first stage to complete. Pour le circuit du Mans, euh, on rentre dans le circuit du Mans, nous, euh, plateau 3, c'est ça, c'est 9h20. On est parti pour un tour Paris Rambouillet, now that's a breakfast. It's still a bit chilly on this morning on April 26th. Fortunately for Charles and Stefan and their Panard Jr., the weather predictions are fine. This was a car for young people, hence its name Junior. It gave young talents the chance to make their debut in car racing for not a lot of money. We're the third owners of this car and we've kept the original uh, color and shine. For the tour, we've um, just revised the engine and the gearbox and the suspension and so on. Still, one needs plenty of courage and determination to start his 1,400 km long adventure called Tour Auto at the wheel of a 1953 car. With a 750cc engine that only produces 40 brake horsepower. But the two friends start the event with plenty of enthusiasm. We could say the same for Melanie and Mary competing in a BMW Isetta 600, a car which is very much appreciated by the fans. Indeed, we uh, we get a lot of positive reactions. 
People seem to like our car a lot, yes. Maybe they don't like us a lot, but we're a bit focused right now. So, But if we should have to stop with an issue, we would quickly get some help. I'm pretty sure of that. Indeed, the Zeta 600 was also the successor of the Zeta 300, but the four-seater did not really do well on the car market. The German brand quickly changes its policy and creates the BMW 700, which turns out to be a bigger success. Vous partez quand la pendule est à zéro. After Rambouillet, the road route takes the competitors in the direction of Le Mans for the first circuit action on the Bugatti circuit. Le Mans is synonym for motorsports history. The quick passage on the French track is not only an appetizer for the Le Mans Classic meeting during the first days of June, but also for the centenary edition of the 24-hour race in 2023. And Le Mans, that's also Pascarolo. As a four times winner and with a record number of participations, Henri is at home in the Le Mans paddock. But Henri Pascarello has also left his marks on the Tour Roteau. This is a, a unique event. The most beautiful cars in the world compete against each other on mountain roads. The rally stage is the most beautiful circuits and hill climbs of France. It was really unique, this event. My uh, best souvenir was the 1970 edition when we scored a 1-2 with Matra. Even then it was quite extraordinary to take a car of the Le Mans 24 hours and the straight of the Hinojère to the roads of the Tour Auto. Unfortunately for Pascarolo, the Tour Auto comes to a halt in Le Mans when the six-cylinder engine of the BMW CSL he shares with Michel Perrin breaks down. And the oil spill of the BMW could also have caused a lot of damage for Philippe Van Drum. Fortunately, his GT40, with four wins, one of the icons of the Le Mans 24 hours as well, is not damaged. And this is the extremely rare Ligier JS2, driven by John of B. This car won the Tour Auto in 1974 and barely missed the Le Mans 24 hours win the next year after which Guy Léger decided to fully focus on racing in Formula One. One of the fascinating aspects of the Tour Auto is that after competing side by side on the circuits, the Léger, the GT40 and all the other cars start in special stages held on closed roads and the drivers give it their all. But that is not without any danger. We uh, missed the corner and I thought we were stuck, but eventually uh, we got out. And then I saw the damage, which was a lot more than I thought, but I didn't think we hit that hard. The Giulietta Sprint Special will require a small cosmetic restoration, but that is part of the game. At La Bolle, the end of stage one, the mechanics do their utmost best to enable Isabelle and Pierre to continue their adventure. Lotus. Ah, voilà, oui. C'est un petit gabarit aussi. Pour Roland, avec ta hauteur... Oui, ouais, ça irait bien. Oui, mais tu pourrais rentrer... Et, et mes grandes jambes. Oui, ouais. tu pourrais rentrer, mais pour ressortir, c'est plus difficile. It's quite obvious that the Lotus Elan 26R is not the ideal car for Roland. And yet, this nimble car is immensely efficient on the stages of the Tour Auto. With 175 brake horsepower for 600 kilograms, this beauty is very agile. Fewer than 100 copies of this racing version were produced, and in the Tour Auto the car has shown its abilities with seven overall wins. The two most recent ones were conquered by Rafael Favaro, and he's back this year. From the start of this year's edition of the Tour Auto, there is an intense battle in all categories. In VHC, the main contenders are once again the powerful Shelby Cobra.
the efficient Porsche 911 and the elegant E-Type Jaguar. Wednesday stages between La Bolle and Limoges offer some fantastic footage. And some scary moments as well. We were a bit too eager, I think, and we arrived too fast. I kept my foot on the brakes, it's completely my fault. Fortunately, I turned the car so it was stopped by the post, but otherwise we would have taken a big drop, I think. We're stuck for the rear wheel, no longer touches the ground, and we're now waiting for an off-roader to, uh, to pull us out. It should arrive any minute now. So, uh, instead of doing this stage in seven minutes, we will complete it in an hour and a half, I think. La 218 à 12h00, pilotée par Thierry Boutsen. Thierry Boutsen, that's 10 years of Formula One, three Grand Prix wins, one second place in the Le Mans 24 hours, and a beautifully controlled spin in the Tour Auto. Three years ago, the Belgian made his debut in the Tour Auto together with his comrade Hervé Ordioni. At the wheel of a Porsche 911, they learned the ropes, and now they're back with a Cobra to win. From the start, they take the lead. On the race circuits, Jerry goes spread out to increase their advantage, and he really enjoys driving this car. The sensations I get in the car, it's, it's nimble, it's light, it almost has 500 brake horsepower. That's what I had when I started in F1. In my first year, my car had 475 brake horsepower. It's almost the same. Of course, this car is a lot heavier, almost a thousand kilograms, and my F1 was 500 kilograms. But this is a, a racing animal, a real monster. There is quite a contrast between Bhutan's beastly Shelby Cobra and the massive Volvo P544 that Peter and Madrid drive on the Val de Vienne circuit. And yet, this car has won races in its day, and it's still completely original, much to the pride of the team. This is a 1960 Volvo 544. It won the Coupe des Alpes in 1961 and participated in the 1962 Monte Carlo Rally in the hands of an old ladies duo, which was pretty rare in those days. You don't get many these days either, but uh, more than in those days. I visited um, Evie Rosequist, who drove the car in 61 uh, and 62. She was the best Swedish uh, rally driver back then, winning the Ladies' Cup in the Coupe des Alpes in 1961. And a year later, she participated in the 1962 Monte Carlo Rally. First two days proved to be very long and hard for man and machine. In the Limoges service park, the mechanics have plenty of work to do, and it will probably be another short night's sleep. The Tour Auto is a true race on both circuits and open roads, so it is essential that both the competitors and the numerous fans along the roads can enjoy the show in the safest of circumstances. That is one of the tasks of the road openers. Among them, rally ace Ari Vatanen at the wheel of a sporty version of the BMW M3, partner of the Tour Auto. It's like music, isn't it? It's, if you're passionate about life, you can't remain indifferent to it. It's all about emotions, all the time. Eric Ellery has one as well with Isabelle Lebon, Peter Rotter's associate director, at his side. We do the stages before the competitors do, to check everything is, uh, is in order. That the stewards are on time, for example, that's Isabelle's task. And we really take care of the safety of everyone following us, and we check if there is nothing dangerous on the roads. From Limoges to Bordeaux, the competitors will once again enjoy some of France's most beautiful roads. Well, not all competitors. Jean-Marc and Patricia Mussolini, with their impressive and unique Porsche 904, one of the stalwarts of the Tour Auto, end their race in a ditch. No injuries, fortunately, 
but the 904 has suffered just a bit. They decide to retire, much to the sadness of their old friends Damien Kohler and Sylvie Laboine, among the first to arrive at the scene. in the Dordogne and Gironde regions are certainly among the highlights of the Tour at all. There are thousands of spectators along these roads this year, from real connoisseurs to a bunch of friends enjoying the spectacle, and Pierrette is among them. Qu'est-ce que c'est comme voiture, ça? Ah, c'est bien, elle est belle, celle-là, dis donc. Bonjour! Bonjour! Ouais. Oui, oui, hein. Oh là là. Ouah, c'est là, dis donc. Waouh. Salut. 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 Hop. Salut. Et là. Ah, salut. Il a fait bonjour. C'est bien, c'est bien. Oh, là, il y a des chevaux, hein. Oh là là, les bagnoles. Not sure Kevin and Lee Jones took the time to say hi to Pierrette. Their driving style in their Ford Escort RS 1600 is among the most spectacular of this year's edition. Kevin's driving style is so generous, the steering of the Ford goes awry just before the lunch stop at the Chateau de la Bourlie. So if I can get it out, I can go up flat. No, because the steering sits too high for Kevin, that's where the space is there. Yeah, but I can bolt it there, you see what I'm saying? I can space it down with this. I don't need... Oh, yeah, 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 good, yeah. good, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And speaking of Chateau, when the Tour Rateau approaches Bordeaux, the regroup before the last stage of the day is held at the Chateau de Lorette in the famous Saint-Emilion region. All the cars in this prestigious park are quite elegant, even cars that are not necessarily the most prestigious. This small Simca 1000 has caught our attention, for this is not your run-of-the-mill version. Only a great Italian master could transform a sturdy cabinet into an elegant coupé. There were only 10,700 of these built, but it never really worked on the car market, and it was quickly replaced by the 1200S, which became a lot more popular. Nowadays, there are only 300, 350 of these left, and you really have to take your time to find one, especially if you want one without any rust. And the tools are very difficult to find as well. It's the first time that this car participates in the historic version of the Tour Auto. Bordeaux is considered to be one of France's most beautiful cities, and the Navy Museum is the ideal location for a cultural and gastronomical walking dinner. Voilà, voilà, voilà. Et là, et tu te laisses tomber dans la siège. Voilà, James. Yeah, James. Si tu pousses cette bouton, la voiture va commencer. Starting a V12 Ferrari engine, which kid has never dreamt of doing that? The Ferrari 365 GTB is the star car of this edition of the Tour Auto. Members of the press gave it the Daytona nickname after the brand's triple win on the Florida circuit, but Ferrari never accepted that name. But nowadays, everybody knows this car under that label. It's the true descendant of the 250 GTO, but the Ferrari factory never officially entered the car in races. It still won the 1972 Tour Auto driven by Jean-Claude Androuet, and the Le Mans 24 Hours entered by the Ecury Francochamps. This is the Ecury Francochamps car, which uh, raced in the 1975 Le Mans 24 Hours. It finished in ninth place with Jean-Claude Androuet at the wheel, together with uh, Hugues de Firland and uh, Teddy Pilet. I really love the colors of this car and the whole livery, in fact, and the names that are on it. 
I've owned this car for 10 years now and every year I love it a little bit more. I will never ever sell this car, I will keep it until the end of my life. NERT also entered some GTB foreign races in the United States like the one of Jeremy Langsweert, still in its original red color scheme. This American car gave the 31st edition of the Tura Tora a very international aura, as did the other American entries, both from the north and the south of the continent. We have uh, drivers from Argentina, the United States, uh, Brazil. In short, it's a real Tura Tora. They enjoy it a lot and are, just like us, impressed by the diversity of the scenery and the welcoming people along the way. It's uh, really great, we're back to normal. On Friday, the competitors are faced with two very challenging stages, but all drivers and co-drivers adore them. The Nogaro circuit is a stage of the last group race of this 2022 edition. The city of Po and the Pyrenees formed the program of the final day of racing with a completely new finish in the Principality of Andorra. These are the roads on which the victory battle in the regularity category will be decided. The Tour Tau has two very varied groups of cars that compete against each other in regularity, trying to match the average speed imposed by the organizers. They can only use an analog chronograph and a table of average speeds to do so. Obviously, some can do this better than others, like the Argentine Oxford duo on a Ferrari 275, Henriksen on a Maserati 300S, or Region Day on a CG Simca. But this year, they were all beaten by a Belgian duo that emphatically dominated the event. They even received admiring comments from the competition. Rien n'est facile, là, je peux te rassurer. Quand on arrive, on voit qu'on a fait X secondes, et puis la première chose qu'on fait, qu'est-ce que la CG a fait In their first two roto, Jean-Jacques Martens and Aswin Pick led their lumpish Volvo PV444 to victory, a first for the event. Aswin and I have been driving together for over 10 years now. He's kept all the records so he can tell you how many podium finishes we've had, how many rallies we did, how many stages we drove. This must be rally number 160 something, and we have 62 podium finishes and 32 wins. So he keeps it all on the internet, we still have it all. Ok les gars, euh, bon vous savez on a 1000 paniers au total à distribuer, on sait qu'ils arrivent à partir de 10h30 jusqu'à 13h30. Euh, la composition comme d'habitude en triplat fromage dessert, on a le petit cadeau, le couteau habituel, vous pouvez leur dire. Et il faut glisser à chaque fois la petite notice, les points de vue remarquables pour pique-niquer. Je 
souhaite peut-être la victoire. Je vous laisse de quoi prendre des forces. Bonjour Monsieur Boutsen. Je crois que vous êtes en tête du général. C'est pour vous requinquer et pour jouer la victoire finale. C'est dans le détail, hein, parce ouais, que t'as vu le sac, euh, c'est pas du sac plastique et ni un sac papier. C'est vraiment chouette ce tour autour. C'est limite, j'ai peut-être regardé. Euh... Joe, what do you think of the lunch then? Yeah, it's good. We've had a starter, chicken pasta, uh, some cheese, and now I've got a éclair. The 14th and last stage of this Tour Auto is held in Andorra, a breathtaking stage in a superb setting with plenty of twisty mountain roads, the ideal environment for a final confrontation. Damien Collard and Sylvie Lavoine gave it their all and end up on the podium. It's their sixth podium finish and that's a record for Damien and Sylvie. Rafael Favaro and Thomas de Saulieu finish in second in the event, which means the victory spoils go to Jerry Bouton and Hervé Ordioni. It's been 23 years since the former Williams F1 driver won a car race, and Jerry and Hervé celebrate their win with a certain emotion. We gave ourselves three years to win with this car, but we've missed that goal, obviously. Everything Jerry does, he does quickly, so he did it in one year, not three. It almost looked easy. No, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't. Up until today, in my whole life, I've only done some 300 kilometers of special stages. So I am still a bit of a newbie when it comes to uh, rallying. Circuit racing went a bit better, but even then I had to adapt to the car and find a good rhythm on circuits I had never driven on. But in the end, it went very well. This chapter in the great book of the Tour Auto comes to an end in Andorra, but the first lines of the next one, which will be held in the spring of 2023, are already written.